It's been a long time coming, but the first ever 5G spec was finally approved late last year. 5G NR, as it's called, will bring about super fast mobile internet by tapping into new spectrum. We're expecting to see the first 5G ready phones in the first half of 2019, although most people likely won't experience the full benefits of the new technology until about a year later. Still, 5G NR promises to dramatically improve cellular internet speeds and enable experiences like always connect to laptops or live streaming from standalone VR headset. The entire mobile industry is excited as hell for it, so here's a little guide to help you make sense of the hype. Let's really briefly go over what 5G is. It refers to the fifth generation of mobile networking standards determined by the 3GPP, the organization that sets the guidelines for every company operating in cellular communications. Get used to hearing the official name, 5G NR, which stands for new radio, by the way. It doesn't really mean anything, it'll just be used the way LTE is today to differentiate it from previous versions. Where 3G brought the internet everywhere and 4G LTE made it faster, 5G NR is meant to vastly boost the capacity and speed of networks, bringing you your high-res cat videos and 4K VR live streams without any delay. One of the ways 5G will enable this is by tapping into new unused bands at the top of the radio spectrum. These high bands are known as millimeter waves and have been recently opened up by regulators for licensing. They've largely been untouched by the public since the equipment required to use them effectively has typically been expensive and inaccessible. Like you'd need a large satellite dish to use these waves to communicate over long distances. But technology has improved to the point where the industry collectively believes we can start tapping them for consumer electronics. And since they haven't been used for much compared to lower bands, they're far less congested and can therefore enable super fast transfers. Qualcomm said you can expect typical speeds of 1.4 gigabits per second. That's 20 times faster than the average US home broadband connection. At peak rates, think 5 Gbps. It's enough to stream 50 4K movies from Netflix at the same time. Millimeter waves tend to be susceptible to interference and generally need to maintain line of sight for transmission to work. At the most basic level, millimeter wave transmissions usually go in a straight line between point A and point B. But with these waves, something as simple as a person walking in between the receiver and the transmitter can block the signal altogether. So companies have to figure out how to make sure the signal gets from base stations to mobile devices. And with 5G NR, part of the solution are two processes called beam forming and beam tracking. With waves in the lower bands, operators can simply send a bunch of them to your phone since they're strong enough to penetrate obstructions. Think of sending a signal to your phone as trying to light up one person's face in a pitch black theater. With lower bands, it's like using floodlights. Easy peasy. You can cover larger areas and most likely get the person's face, although maybe not very intensely. With beam forming of millimeter waves, it's more like using a spotlight to find that place, which is tricky if the person is turned away from the source. So you'll have to get creative by using the environment. You can bounce light off reflective surfaces in the theater or set up multiple spotlights in different places to make sure that there's always one that can shine on your desired area. You can also set these lights to sweep, moving around along with the target. Companies like Qualcomm and Ericsson have made equipment that can send and receive these beams. In the most simple scenario for beam forming, where the biggest challenge is that the receiver isn't facing the transmitter, the solution is as simple as bouncing the beam off a surface at a precise angle. The receiving device uses beam tracking to determine which signal is the strongest and picks it up. That sounds straightforward until you consider the challenges when implementing this in the real world. Take an office building, for example. Even when you have base stations set up on your floor, there are many variables to consider. For instance, metals bounce beams while concrete absorbs them. So if you're inside a conference room, a base station from outside could potentially shoot a beam in through a wall, hit a metal lamp, and bounce off to your phone. To get this to work reliably enough for public use, there have to be a ton of beams for your phone to track. Not only that, your phone's antenna array has to be built in a way that your hand doesn't completely cover up the receiver at any time. 
Qualcomm's solution is to have antenna arrays in opposite corners of your phone. And since many major smartphone brands have announced that they'll be using Snapdragon 5G-capable components for launches in the first half of 2019, this is likely to be the setup for most of the first 5G-ready phones. Not sold? Or not convinced that millimeter waves will be stable enough for sure? Don't panic yet. Just as your phone falls back to 3G when LTE isn't available, 4G will stick around to make sure you remain connected to the internet even if you're not using millimeter waves. Most people won't even have access to 5G immediately. The rollout is likely to begin in cities and spread out to rural areas. And you may need an expensive high-end device to tap the new technology at first. Later versions of 5G will also allow things like IoT devices to connect to millimeter waves, as well as allow for use of unlicensed spectrum to increase speeds some more. But eventually, it should become as prevalent as 4G is today. When that happens, it'll be time to think about 6G. Holy crap, what will that be like?